verse 21. Glad you're saved this morning. Amen. Amen. Got one over here happy. I mean, he's glad you're saved this morning. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Isaiah 44 and verse number 21 says, Remember these, O Jacob and Israel, for thou art my servant. I have formed thee. Thou art my servant, O Israel. Thou shalt not be forgotten of me. This morning I want to preach on the thought of forgotten not. Forgotten not. Let's pray and ask for God's help. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for this time and opportunity, Lord, to stand behind this pulpit and God to declare the word of truth. God, we know your word is truth. It's alive, it's powerful. God, it's sharper. God, than any two-edged sword. God, dividing even between the soul and the spirit. God, and the bone and the marrow. Father, I pray right now, God, that you would anoint me and help me. God, strengthen my voice. And God, touch my body and help me, God, to be able to declare the Word of God with clarity today. Help me, God, to speak, God, what you want spoken. And God, most importantly, I pray, God, for that fresh anointing of the Holy Ghost. Father, I I pray, God, that you'd anoint every ear to hear and every heart to receive your word today. Father, I pray it all in the name of Jesus. And everybody say amen. Forgotten not. The word forgotten means to omit, mentioning, leave unnoticed, to fail, to think of, and to take no note of. Has anybody in here ever felt like God has forgotten you? Me? I'm only the one. Anybody in here ever felt like God has forgotten you? I came to tell you this morning, God has not forgotten you today. Amen. I've tried in my natural to forget God. I remember there was a time in my life where I tried everything I could to run from God. I tried to put God out of my mind. I didn't pray. I didn't read the Bible. I didn't want to come to church, but I came to church and I tried to push God out of my mind. I tried to fill my life with everything the world had to offer. I tried, amen, to not even think about God. I tried to just push Him out of my mind. But you know what? I couldn't do it. He was always there. Amen. And things began to remind me of how it felt to be saved. And I tried to push those feelings aside and tried to push them down where it didn't convict me and it didn't bother me. Amen. But those feelings always were there and they continued to go through my mind and I tried to get God out of my mind but I couldn't even get Him out of my mind. And how many knows this morning no matter how bad we may think it is, amen, we can't be removed from God's mind today. God loves you today and God cares about you today. Amen. God cannot erase you from His mind. Amen. I know the Bible says sin separates us from God. Amen. But that doesn't say that God stops loving us even when we fail and we walk away from Him. Amen. I'm glad that when I was in the midst of my sins and I tried to do away with Him and I tried to forget Him that He came for me. He came for me. And then he walked to the back of the church and he came to me and he said, do you want to be saved? Amen. And I got saved. Amen. God cannot erase you from his mind. You're not forgotten today. You're not forgotten today. Amen. God loves you today. Amen. The Bible says, whosoever will, let them come. Amen. God's not concerned about where you've been or what you've been through, but he loves you today. And He came to tell you this morning, I've not forgotten you. Amen. Have you ever felt like, amen, that God has just picked you up and set you on a shelf? Just set you there. And you felt like you were sitting there by yourself. I've been there. I was saved. I was serving God. 
Amen. But I felt like that God had just picked me up and set me on a shelf and said, all right, I'll be back later to get you. And it felt like time went by and God didn't come back to get me. Amen. I just felt like I was sitting there on the shelf. Amen. I felt like I was sitting there all by myself. Amen. But as I sit there on the shelf, amen, God was beginning to do a work on the inside of me. Amen. God was beginning to prepare things that were ahead of me that I thought were not possible. Amen. Even though I felt like I was sitting on the shelf and God had pushed me to the side. Amen. God was ahead of me working things out. Amen. That I thought couldn't be worked out. Amen. He was doing things that I thought, amen, could not be done. Amen. I felt like He had forgot me. He put me on the shelf and He walked away and left me. Amen. But God was right there with me even though I couldn't feel Him. Even though I couldn't see what He was doing. Amen. God was still working. And God was still doing things. God does not forget His children. Amen. Even though we may not shout every day, Amen, God has not forgotten us. Even though life is hard, Amen, God has not forgotten us. Even though you may be in the valley right now, God has not forgotten you. We sing that song, and I love that song. He's the God on the mountain. He's the God in the valley. You may be in the valley today. Amen. God is still God. And God is still with you. Amen. God said He would not forget Israel. Amen. He, he said, Remember thee, O Jacob, in Israel, for thou art my servant. I have formed thee. How many knows we all been formed by the hand of God? Amen. We've been created in the likeness and the image of Almighty God. Amen. Remember in Jeremiah, he said, Even in the belly. Amen. Before we were formed, he knew us. He knows where you are today. He knows what you're going through. And he has not forgotten you today. Amen. Hallelujah. Not forgotten. We're not forgotten. God has you. Amen. God's going to get you through what you got to go through. Amen. He's not going to take you around it. Amen. But He's going to bring you through it. Hallelujah. Too many times we want to walk around. Amen. But God says we're going to go through it. Amen. With you and God, how many knows you can get through it? Amen. But if you try to go through it by yourself, amen, you ain't going to make it. Amen. But if you hold to the unchanging hand of God, amen, if you hold to God's hand, He's going to bring you through. Amen. 2 Corinthians 1 and 20 says, For all... The promises of God in Him are yea, and in Him are amen, unto the glory of God by us. How many knows the promises of God are yea and amen? Amen. There is no, amen, maybe, there is no might be. Amen. If God said it, how many knows it's done? It's a done deal. Amen. If God said, I'll never leave you nor I forsake you, amen, God's going to be standing right beside you. Even when you walk through the fire, amen, He'll walk through the fire with you. Amen. No matter what life throws your way today, Amen. I came to tell you, Amen. God has not forgotten you. Amen. God has not forsaken you. Amen. But God is right with you today. Amen. Stand on the promises. The Bible says the promises of God in Him are yea and in Him, Amen. There is no question of God's promises. Amen. If God said in His Word, Jesus spoke in the red letter edition, He said, I'll never leave you, nor I forsake you, but I'll go with you to the very end. Even when you can't feel Him, He's there. Even when you feel like you're going to give up. Amen. How many knows He's still there? He said, I'll never leave you, nor I forsake you. Amen. How many knows we need to stand on that promise? And we need to know that He's there with us. Amen. Hallelujah. God's promises are set in stone. Amen. I can tell you I'm going to do something and I may not fail. Amen. I may fail to do what I said I was going to do. Amen. But how many knows God will not fail? Amen. God has not failed and God will never fail. Amen. God has not forgotten. Amen. God will show up and God will bring you through. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I know life is hard. I know life is tough. How many knows He never promised us a bed of roses? 
He never promised us, hey man, everything's just going to go splendor and dandy. He never promised we'd never be sick. He never promised we'd have to fight the devil. He never promised we wouldn't be tempted. Amen? Amen. But he said even though we go through these things, he's going to go through us with it. Amen. Brother Rick said it this morning. How many knows today when we are weak, he is strong. Amen. When you're so weak, you can't get your head up. Amen. You hold on to him and let him pull you up. Amen. When we're weak, he's strong. Amen. He's not forgotten us today. Amen. But he's right here with us today. Amen. I thought about Job. Thought about all that Job went through. Amen. Job lost everything that he had in a matter of moments. One bad report after another bad report. Amen. They came in and they said, All your children have been killed. Then they said all there is, is cattle and all of the things that he possessed was all taken away. Amen. One right after another. Amen. Some of us have lost in this life. Some of us have lost things down here. Some have lost a home. Some have lost a companion. Amen. Some have lost children. Some have lost this and some have lost that. But can you imagine losing everything that you had? Your family. Amen. Your kids. All your kids at one moment in time. Amen. They're all wiped out, they're all gone. Amen. All your homes, all your land, everything that you own, everything you possess, everything that you touch, amen, it was gone. Man, in a matter of minutes, Job could have shook his fist at God and said, God, where are you? God, why am I going through this? God, why is this happening to me? Amen. The Bible says that no, there's no man no more upright than Job. He was living for God, doing the things of God. Amen. He was going to church. He was praising the Lord. He was giving in the offerings. He was doing what he was supposed to do. Amen. He was walking the line. He was living for Jesus. Amen. He was living holy for God. Amen. He was doing everything that he was supposed to do. Amen. But he lost everything everything that he had. Amen. But Job, oh man, let's go to Job chapter 1 and verse 19 through 20. Amen. Job arose. He rid his mantle. He shaved his head. He fell down upon the ground and he worshipped. Amen. He said, Naked I came out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 You may have lost some stuff here. You may have lost some loved ones here. Amen. But I came to tell you, God has not forgotten you. Amen. God is still with you. Amen. God will fill that hole in your heart. Amen. And oh, it may take some time. It may take some crying. It may take some praying. Amen. But God will fill that hole in your heart. Amen. You may have lost a home. You may have lost a job. Amen. I've been there. Amen. I've lost it before. Amen. But God can restore. Amen. What Satan wants to take from us. Amen. Well, I believe what the key is today, don't forget to worship. Don't forget to worship. Don't forget to worship. Amen. Don't let your problems determine your praise. Don't let your situation determine your worship. Amen. Don't let you thinking that God has forgotten you. Amen. Change the fact that He's still holy. He's still on His throne. And He's still worthy to be praised. He's still worthy of worship today. Amen. Job lost everything. Amen. In a matter of moments in time. Amen. Everything that he had was gone. Amen. And then the Bible says that he was stricken. Amen. With boils from the top of his head. Amen. Down to the soles of his feet. His body was covered in boils. Amen. I've had boils before and they're very painful. I can't imagine from the top of your head down to the soles of your feet being covered in boils. Yet he worshipped. He worshipped. He worshipped. Even though God may have seat set you on a shelf and you feel like God's not there, amen, you need to worship God. Amen. Even though you can't see how you're going to get through what you're going through, amen, you still need to worship God. Amen. God does not change when life happens to us. When problems arise, amen, God is still God and God is still worthy to be praised. When the devil's ripping and roaring, trying to devour, amen, God is still worthy to be praised. 
When you feel like your heart has been broken and it's been broken and it's been broken and it's been broken. Amen. God is still worthy to be praised. Amen. God is still worthy to be praised. We may not know why. We may not understand why. Amen. But we need to understand that God is still worthy of worship. Don't let the devil quiet you up. That's what he wants. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. He wants to steal your door, joy. He wants to steal your praise. He wants to steal your worship. Amen. If he steals your joy, amen, he knows he's going to come in the back door. He's going to try to pull you down. Amen. But keep worshiping God. Job said, naked I came into this world, naked I'm leaving. Amen. Brother Rick talked about it this morning. I'm not trying to rehearse this sermon. Amen. But he said, when you're going down to the funeral procession, how many knows they're not following you with a bunch of U-Hauls? There's nothing you're going to take out of here except for what's on the inside of you. Amen. The home you live in ain't going to get you to the other side. Amen. That car you came in here today in the parking lot with, it's not going to help you go over to the other side. Amen. Whatever we obtain down here, we're not going to be able to take it over there. Only the thing of God that we have inside of us are the things that's going to go over there. Amen. Job understood. He lost it all. Then the Bible says his wife even came. Said, why don't you just curse God and die? He probably felt like dying. He probably didn't understand, but I don't see anywhere where God, Job questioned God or Job charged God foolishly. We don't understand why. We don't know why. I wish I understood why good people have to go through bad things. I don't have the answer today. But I know this. When you go through bad things, the God of heaven is going through it with you. Amen. The God of heaven, amen, has not dropped you. He's not forgotten you. He's right there with you. Amen. We got to go through stuff. We got to go through things. Amen. But we'll understand it better by and by. We sang that song this morning. Amen. We don't know why now. Amen. But when we get to the other side, how many knows we're going to be worth it? Amen. This old sick, tired, worn out body that we have. Amen. We're going to lay it down and we're going to pick up a perfected body. Amen. The body that's fashioned after Christ. Amen. Body that has no cancer in it. Amen. A body that has no eyeglasses. A body that has no depression. A body that's never sick. Amen. A body that's never fallen apart. Amen. But a perfect body fashioned in the image and the likeness of Almighty God. Amen. Of Christ. Amen. We're going to have that glorified body. Amen. Weeping may endure for the night, but how many knows joy is coming in the morning? Joy is coming in the morning. You may be in the night right now. And you may have been in, not in the night for the last six months. You may have been in the night for the last six years. Amen. But I came to tell you this morning, God has not forgotten you. Amen. God has not forsaken you. The joy is on your way. Amen. Morning is about to come. The sun's about to shine. Just hold on. Just trust Him. And just keep on worshiping Him. Amen. Hallelujah. How I many has been faced with things you thought you'd never get through? Tristan's the only one. Kathy. Anybody else? Let me see your hand. Come on, hold them up high. You show somebody else. Let others see they're not the only one that's been through some stuff they thought they were never going to get through. Amen. But how many can raise your hand and say, you got through it? Come on, how many can raise your hand and say, I got through it? I got through it. I got through it. Amen. By the hand of Almighty God. Amen. When my strength had failed. Amen. When I was ready to throw in the towel. Amen. And shut the Bible and never open it again. Amen. Some way, somehow, I got through it. I got through it. I got through it. Amen. And you're going to get through it too. Amen. God has not forgotten you. Amen. God has not forsaken you. Amen. But God is going to see you through. Amen. Man will fail you. Your family will fail you. People will fail you but God will never fail you today. Amen. Hallelujah. All you can do is say, Jesus. Jesus. How many knows that we sing that song, just the mention of His name? Amen. Flowers begin to bloom. I don't remember how it goes. You just begin to mention the name of Jesus. How many knows the atmosphere in the room begins to change? 
Amen. The atmosphere in our mind begins to say. How many knows our mind sometimes is a battlefield and Satan tries to get in our mind. He tries to tell us to quit. He tries to tell us what's to use. He tries to say, come on, just give up. And he tries to get in our minds and he tries to torment our minds. Amen. How many knows when you just begin to speak the name of Jesus? How many knows your mind begins to clear up? Amen. Your atmosphere begins to change. How many knows your whole room can change when you begin to speak the name of Jesus? Amen. Hallelujah. God has not forgotten you. And He will show up. He's never early. He's never late. God doesn't come dragging in the door on Sunday morning. How many knows God was already here? God don't come dragging in at the last minute. How many knows God has a perfect plan? God has a perfect purpose. Amen. God will show up at the right time, the perfect time. Amen. Right when you're about to go under, He'll swoop down and pull you up. Amen. I'm riding to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. How many remembers the story? Amen. They were living for God, doing the right thing, praying, seeking God. Amen. The king built an idol. He said, you got to bow down and worship. They said, no, king, we're not going to bow down and worship. Amen. I'm going to stand for God. I'm going to live for God. I'm going to do the right thing. Amen. But just because they did the right thing... Just just because they stood for, amen, for the things of God. How many knows it didn't mean they didn't get thrown into the fire? Amen. Just because you stand for God, just because you live for God, just because you pray and seek the face of God, doesn't mean you're going to have to go through the fire. Amen. We have to go through the fire sometimes. But how many remembers what happened? Amen. The Bible says Jesus showed up in the fire. Amen. He'll show up in the fire for you today. How many knows he's not scared of fire? <coughs> Excuse me. The heat of the furnace seven times hotter. The men that threw him in the furnace fell down to the ground dead. How many knows Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, amen, began to dance around in the fire. They began to worship. Huh? In the midst of the fire, they begin to worship. See, there's the key. you got to worship. Amen. They didn't bend. They didn't bow. Amen. They didn't give in. They kept on praising God. They kept on worshiping God. When Satan said, bend your knees, they said, I'm not bending my knees. Amen. When the devil said, quit, give up, they said, we will not quit. We will not give up. I will worship God. And how many of those Jesus showed up in the midst of the fire? Amen. I talked about it a few weeks ago. All the king and all the big shots of the town were there that day. They were all standing there because the king made this decree. All the mayors, all the councilmen, all the city councilors were there. Whatever they were. Whatever they called them back then. They were all there that day. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into the fiery furnace. How many knows all the big shots? All the people that were looking from afar, they saw Jesus in the midst of the fire. We don't understand why we got to go through what we're going through. I believe we go through what we go through that we can bring glory to God through what we have to go through. That people can look at you and say, you ought to give up. They, ought to, they look at you and say, you ought to go lock yourself up. You ought to have a nervous breakdown. Boom! You ought to just blow your brains out. That's what they'll say. That's what the devil will say. How many knows God has not forgotten you? God has not forsaken you. God's going to use what you're in right now to bring glory to Him. He's going to help you to get through what you're going through. So one day, one day, you can arise to your feet and give glory to God and say, God showed up for me in the midst of my fire, in the midst of my trial, in the midst of my mess. Anybody ever been in a mess? In the midst of my mess, He showed up. And today I stand and I testify of what God's done. I told you stories before. We lost a child. We didn't understand why we lost that baby. We didn't know why we had to go through that. We couldn't understand. We were fixing the room up, getting it all ready because we went to the doctor and they said everything looks all right. 
We were youth pastors. We were living for God. Amen. We prayed every day. We sought God. We were doing everything we know to do. And we lost that baby. We prayed. We sought God. Lord, we want this baby. Lord, let him be okay. We lost that little baby. Our hearts felt like they were ripped out. We didn't know why. We couldn't see the plan of God. We didn't understand it. But later on, several years went by. And I tell you the story, I'll tell you again, there were six youth pastors that lost a child that year. I was over them. I was their pastor, so to say. I was there for them. And I was able to sit down beside them and say, I know what you're going through. I feel your pain because I've been there. I've been there. So what you're going through today, amen, God's going to bring you through it so you can sit down beside somebody and say, I know what you're going through. I feel your pain because I sat in your seat one day. God has not forgotten you. God has a plan. God has a purpose. Don't fail to worship Him. Don't try to figure it out. Too many people try to... I try to understand, God, why? God, why did this happen? I don't understand. The doctor said everything's going to be all right. I don't understand, but God said no, it's going to be okay, but I got through it. There was a hole in my heart for a while, amen, but the hole's still there. I still remember, amen, but God has healed that hole, and I was able to minister to somebody else. God's going to help you to be able to minister to somebody else one day. You say, I'm not a preacher. No, you're not. You know what? If we had a whole room full of preachers, what good would we do? God's looking for people like you to sit down beside people out there that are hurting and say, I know what you're going through. Because one day I was lost. I was dying. I was going to hell. I know what it feels like to be a dirty, rotten sinner. And you can sit down beside them, and that's the only thing you've got to tell them, and say, I was lost, I was undone, I was without God, and I was full of sin. And if all you have to tell them is how God saved you, then you tell them how God has saved you. But if you see them going through something that you've been through, you sit down beside them, and you tell them that God will help them through what they're going through. Amen. You ain't got to be a preacher to do that. God will take your mess. God will take your tests. And He'll make a testimony out of it. Don't forget to praise Him. Don't forget to worship Him while you're going through it. Job understood. It wasn't God's fault. It wasn't God that he should be mad at. It was the devil he should have been mad at. But anyway, the Bible says that Job was blessed with two times as much as what he had before. God didn't let him go without. God restored everything that Job lost. You may feel like you've lost it all today. And then God's going to restore those things that Satan's tried to take from you. Those things of life. Amen. We blame a lot of things on the devil sometimes, and sometimes it's just life. Life will steal things from you. How many knows God will restore it? if you hold on to Him and you fail not to worship Him. Hold to His hand, church. He's going to bring us through. I know there's a lot of stuff going on today. But God's not forgotten the Lafayette Pentecostal Church of God. And God's not forgotten each and every one of you sitting here today. The Bible says He knows exactly how many hairs you got on your head. God's with you today. He's not forgotten. As we stand, singers, musicians, come. God's here today. God's here today. He's not forgotten you. He's here to help you. He's here to strengthen you. He's here to encourage you. I hope the Word of God has encouraged somebody's heart today. God's not forgotten you. He's not trying to beat you down. Amen. But He's going to bring you through. I know we feel beat up sometimes. How many knows without any marks? I remember scars of of things that's happened in my life. I remember cutting myself, doing this and that, looking at my hand and knowing exactly what had happened when I cut myself at that moment in time. I mean, those scars are to remind us of things that we've been through, things that have happened. Sometimes they're not nice, pleasing. Some of you got scars where you've been through heart surgery. Some of you got scars where you've been through surgeries. 
Amen. Those scars aren't always nice and pleasing. Amen. But they're to remind you that God has brought you through. Amen. Thus far. And He's not going to bring you this far and let you fall. He's there to help you through the rest of the way. Amen. You take your last breath here, you're going to take your next breath there. Amen. The devil may take, try to take your life and try to take you out. Amen. But how many knows in the end, God's going to get the glory as you walk down those streets of gold and you hear Jesus say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. As we bow our heads and close our eyes today, maybe you're here this morning. You're without God. You're not saved. You're not where you need to be with God. That's the first and foremost, most important question. Today, if you would stand before God, are you ready to meet Him? If God would call you home today, would He look at you and say, the blood of Jesus has been applied to their heart? If you're here this morning without Christ, as Lord of your heart, the altars are open for you today. Yeah, we still got altars. If you'll make a step of faith, get out of your seat and say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need to be saved. He'll save you this morning. He'll forgive you of all your sins. He'll save you from eternal hell. He'll write your name down in heaven. He'll begin to work on that mansion that He's prepared for you. If you're here this morning without Christ, these altars are open for you. Maybe you're here this morning, you're saved, you're born again. You're living for God, doing the best you can. But maybe you feel like this morning God has forgotten you. God has dropped you. Or God has set you on a shelf. He don't know where you're at. But I came to tell you today, He's not forgotten you. He knows exactly where you're at. If you get out of your seat today, come to this altar and say, God, I feel like you've forgotten me. How many knows we need to be real with God? You feel like He's forgotten you today? You come and tell Him. Say, Lord, I feel like you've forgotten me. God, help me to know where you're at. Help me to feel your presence. One more time. That's you today. Would you come? Does that mean you're a sinner? No. Just because a child of God comes to the altar doesn't mean they're a sinner. If you're here today, you feel forgotten. You feel like you need some strength from God. Come kneel around these altars. Let God refresh you. Let God renew you today. Would you come? Come around these altars today. The altars are open. Would you come? I'm not going to pull anybody out of their seat, but I'm here to invite you. Would you come? If you don't want to come around the altars, let's all find us a place of prayer. Let God renew your strength today. Let God refresh your soul. Let God refresh your mind today. Thank you, Jesus.
Brother Chuck, Sister Lily, will you come back for Brother Frank? I could be free.
Father, we love you today. And God, we are so thankful, God, for our salvation. We thank you, Lord, for reaching down out of heaven. God, pulling us up, up out of the muck and the mire of our sins. Lord, for bringing us out of that horrible pit, God. I pray right now, God, that you get the praise and the glory in this house. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Give me my hand clap of praise. I'm just glad for that day when you reached out his hand. Amen. Praise God. Remember all the announcements. Remember service tonight. Amen. And this is uh, five Sundays in October. Brother Nate reminded me to announce that, and I forgot he's on vacation today. Uh, there will be five Sundays in October, so when he gets back, if you're interested in singing, please see Brother Nate next Sunday, because there will be five Sundays in October. So I apologize for that. I have a meeting right after service, so if I don't get to shake everybody's hand, it's not because I'm mad at anybody. I just want to let you know. So, I right. appreciate you being here today, but most of all, we appreciate the Lord being here. Amen. Brother Mike Rurick, will you dismiss us in prayer today?